All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to finally introduce one of the most important concepts in all of investments, mean variance optimization. So what I'll do is I'll introduce the theory that kind of underlies MVO, and that is modern portfolio theory, which is, I, I would argue, the most important theory in all of investments. Uh, we'll walk through the most important parts of modern portfolio theory, or rather the mean variance optimization or security selection step of modern portfolio theory. And then we'll talk about what happens when we add non-perfectly correlated assets to a portfolio. So seems complicated. It really is not as complicated as it sounds right now, I'm sure. Okay, so what is modern portfolio theory? Well, this is a theory that is really, uh, it, it's been around for a while. It was developed by Harry Markowitz in 1952. Uh, he got a Nobel Prize for this theory. This is, in my opinion, the start of modern investments. The theory essentially says that you can take three components, expected returns, standard deviations, and correlations, and optimize a portfolio based on its sharp ratio, or at least that's the first step anyway. The goal of modern portfolio theory is to find the portfolio with the weights that maximize the sharp ratio. Uh, so really all we're doing here is showing the value of diversification across different investments that have low correlations with one another. So that's why I showed you, you know, the calculations for correlation and covariance uh, last time. All right, now the modern portfolio theory can be broken down into two steps. The step that we're gonna focus on in this video is called security selection. It's the first step in MPT. Uh, this is where we identify the ideal portfolio weights that we assign to different equities, different options, different risky assets that we want to invest in. Uh, this security selection step Often, uh, we, we use the term mean variance optimization or MVO. Uh, if you've ever seen a computer program that identifies the ideal weights for, uh, an investor to invest in, say, in like, oh, value stocks versus growth stocks, what you're looking at is mean variance optimization. What we do is we take those correlations, the standard deviations, the expected returns of assets, and we literally just let the computer decide what the ideal weights are that maximize our sharp ratio. Now, the second step of modern portfolio theory is what we call asset allocation. And asset allocation, uh, this is a step that we don't normally see in the real world, uh, mostly because, well, we'll talk about this later, but, uh, to be able to complete this step, you need to know your coefficient of risk aversion, which is very hard to measure in the real world. Essentially, with asset allocation, what you're doing is you're determining how much of your total wealth to allocate to a risk-free asset like a T-bill versus the risky portfolio that we optimized in step one. Uh, in class, we really won't be messing with this second step. The most important thing to have nailed down is this first step. Uh, but the second step does exist. When you get to 410, you are going to be using this second step in a big way. So, you know, just be aware of that. Uh, but that's that. All right. So let's talk about what we're doing in the first step, the security selection step, where we engage in mean variance optimization. In this first step, the security selection step of the modern portfolio theory, what we're going to be doing is identifying the ideal weights that we assign to some securities. Now, in this example, I've only given us two possible securities that we can invest in. Ford, ticker symbol F, and Microsoft, ticker symbol S MSFT. Now, what I've done is I've identified the expected return on the y-axis that you could have for any portfolio combination of weights and the portfolio volatility, so standard deviation of the portfolio, or uh, sigma sub p, that should be a sub p. Uh, what you can see here is that if we invest everything in Ford, our expected return would be 15%, and our standard deviation would be like 0.47, something like that. 
if we invested everything in Microsoft, so we had a weight in Microsoft of 100%, we'd have an expected portfolio return of 9% and a much lower volatility or standard deviation. So what we're looking at is essentially a plotting of the returns and standard deviations. And this is what we sometimes call our minimum variance frontier. It represents the minimum variance and standard deviation that we could achieve for every level of expected return that we could form using or by building portfolios. Now, we can essentially build a portfolio that will that will achieve any point on here. Uh, this from this dot down up to uh, this dot, this represents the weights that we could achieve if we were just you know, assigning some positive weight for both Ford and Microsoft. If we go beyond this point, what we're going to have to do is short Microsoft and then invest those that cash in additional shares of Ford. So technically we can get out to this part of the curve or the frontier, but you know, not every investor could. If you can't short, you can't get to this part of the frontier. Vice versa, down here, we would need to short Ford and buy more shares of Microsoft with that cash. Uh, so, you know, technically we can reach every point on this curve, but, you know, if you can't short that, that's probably not going to be feasible. Now, at this point right here, this is our minimum variance portfolio. It represents the extreme low value of, or the, the low risk that we could take if we had some weight in Ford and Microsoft. Notice here that it has a, a relatively low uh, expected return. Now, uh, just a couple of terms here that you should be familiar with when we talk about mean variance optimization and security selection. The minimum variance frontier, this is just the curve that you saw. This is the plotting that shows the uh, set of volatilities and variances for every level of expected return. Uh, sometimes we'll call this the mean variance frontier. Really, it just shows you uh, what the lowest volatility and variance you could have for every single level of return. Now, the minimum variance portfolio, that's this thing right here. It's just the minimum variance that you could achieve uh, with any given weight. And then finally, the efficient frontier. Now the efficient frontier, this is the most important part of our minimum variance frontier. It represents the part of the minimum variance frontier above the minimum variance portfolio. So in other words, it represents everything from basically where my cursor is and up. Uh, this is the point that we want to be on. This is the place where we're going to find our most efficient front, uh, our most efficient portfolio. So somewhere on this blue line, north of the minimum variance portfolio is the portfolio combination that we want to invest in. Uh, now notice here that, you know, I do have some cases where we can have portfolio combinations with returns and volatilities uh, way out here. This happens when we have more than two risky securities. What this blue line really represents is the most efficient frontier or the most efficient portfolio with the lowest volatility for every combination, for every return that we could possibly earn. So at the 15% return, yes, we have, we can achieve this point right here, but we can also achieve every point to the right of this if we have more than two securities. If we only have two securities, then we can only achieve this point right here. Uh, so what I'm trying to get at though, is that the best portfolio combination will have the weights that get us on this portion of the blue line. Now, what is the ideal portfolio combination? Uh, well, our ideal portfolio combination is going to be the one that has the highest sharp ratio, the highest risk adjusted return. Remember from our previous videos, our sharp ratio is just our portfolio return minus the risk free rate, all divided by our volatility or standard deviation. Uh, when we find this portfolio uh, with the highest sharp ratio, we're going to call it our tangency portfolio. And I'll show you why in a second. Now there's another definition that you should know here the capital market line. And the capital market line 
is a line that we can draw between our risk-free asset combination and our optimal portfolio. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to graphically draw a line from the risk-free asset that has some positive return and zero volatility, zero risk, and our optimal portfolio. And that line, it's going to just touch our minimum uh, variance frontier, and it's going to run tangent to that frontier at the point where we have our tangency portfolio. In other words, uh, here's our, our minimum variance frontier in blue. And then here we have our capital market line. It starts at wherever we have our risk-free asset. So this point right here represents the yield on usually a T-bill or a T-note. And so in this case, let's say it's 4.5%. But because this asset is risk-free, it has zero volatility. So what we can do is we can invest in this risk-free asset by simply buying T-bills, or we can invest in risky assets that could, you know, you know, appear any, anywhere out here. Now the capital market line, this is the line that runs tangent to this uh, minimum variance frontier. And the ideal portfolio combination with weights that we assign to Ford and uh, Microsoft and any other risky securities is going to be right here. This right here is the portfolio with the combination of weights that we want to achieve. It has the highest sharp ratio of any portfolio with risky uh, securities in it that we could hope to hold. All right, now, I, I should mention a very important point here. What happens if the correlation between our risky assets changes? Well, what we just saw in our, our prior slide is that you know we have this this nice parabola basically we can achieve in our risky portfolio any any return volatility combination in here and the reason it's a parabola is because the correlations between these assets are not perfect they're not perfectly positive if we have portfolio assets, risky portfolio assets that are perfectly positively correlated with one another, like we do in this red line, the only combinations that we can achieve are going to be essentially just a linear combination of each other. I mean, this is the point where we have 100% invested in Ford, and this is the point where we have 100% invested in Microsoft. And then this red line represents essentially just a linear combination of those two assets. However, if we don't have perfect positive correlation, we can achieve some nice results. In other words, we can find uh, combinations where we still have a relatively high return, but a significantly lower risk. And the reason for this is that, you know, when Ford has really poor returns, Microsoft's returns might offset those poor returns with high returns. And so this is the benefit of finding non-perfectly correlated assets. You can actually achieve a, a relatively high return at a pretty low volatility. I mean, notice what happens here when we find two assets that are that have a correlation coefficient of negative 0.6. We can still achieve a portfolio return with this portfolio of about 12%, but our volatility is incredibly low. I mean, 0.1 7-ish, 0.18-ish. I mean, that's that's lower than what we might find on the overall S&P 500 portfolio. So that's pretty good. Okay, so let's summarize what we've talked about. We introduced modern portfolio theory, and we talked about how it has two steps, security selection and asset allocation. I showed you the security selection step in this video. Now that step uses mean variance optimization to assign weights. Uh, basically, we're trying to find the portfolio that has the most efficient uh, return, so essentially the highest sharp ratio. And uh, we also talked about the value of finding assets that have low correlations with one another. Uh, this allows us to build a very diversified portfolio that still has a high return, but relatively low standard deviation. 
Uh, now in class, what we're going to do is we're actually going to optimize portfolios using a program called Solver in Excel, and we'll do some other cool stuff with this. You're actually going to be optimizing portfolios in class. Uh, so with that, I'm going to bring this video to an end. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.